Okay, and we're back, and it's uh, Comp 1011, and um, it's assignment three we're going to talk about today. Uh, it's going to be due next week, so we always do these assignments like one a week kind of thing until we do until I kill you guys with assignments, right? Um, and the reason for this is because I want you to guys to guys be really really good with abstract classes, and this this is what this is going to cover and interfaces. We talked about that. We actually I actually did an example of interfaces and everything else. But now I want you to be tested on it because, or to start doing an assignment with it, because as we get into more advanced UI elements, right, I'm going to need you to understand how to create interfaces or how to, how to implement certain interfaces, especially when we do Android second half, right? So I'm introducing UI elements in the first half because if I don't introduce UI elements in the first half, what ends up happening is when we get to Android, and if you haven't, and by the way, when we talk about spray, uh, Swing, Swing classes in Java, it's really outdated, outmoded. We don't use Swing in Java anymore, but it's a great learning tool for UI, right? And it's also a great learning tool because you get to use classes that already exist that are more robust than, let's say, using something like a string, you know, or something like a date class or time class, right? Swing is a little bit more challenging to figure out, right? So, because like we showed you, right? But at the same time, what you guys need to know understand is the basic building blocks of polymorphism is one of the requirements. Angie would kill me if she says, if she knew that I didn't teach you guys polymorphism in this advanced uh, object-oriented programming, she'd be like, what are you doing? How come? It's supposed to be inheritance of polymorphism. So this is the polymorphism piece that I got to show you, and it's assignment three. Um, it's, worth, it's still worth 5%. And what I did was I kind of pulled together. It's kind of hard to see up here, but if you want to look at the, uh, the document that's... Um, uh, that's online. I've already put it up on Blackboard, right? I've kind of built out my diagrams. I, by the way, I use Visual Studio for the diagram, right? And I, I can show you guys how to use Visual Studio to create your, your uh, class diagrams if you don't know how already. But it's all built in. The UML stuff is all into, inside Visual Studio. And you can decide, you can describe your diagrams and do all your stuff uh, within it, right? So here's your diagram. And uh, what I've pulled together here is um, your planet, the, the planet is your abstract class, right? So your planet is going to have a bunch of fields. Remember, fields are also instance variables. Uh, they're called class variables. They're called whatever, uh, whatever you want to call them. They're the same thing. Fields uh, is what we're talking about here. And what I want you guys to start doing, we're going to talk about that today, um, is as a convention going forward, when you do private member variables for classes, I want you to use the underscore. Okay, so the name of the, the name of the member variables or private um, methods, we're going to use an underscore in front of it as a as a convention. All right. So the underscore is going to tell us that hey, uh, for me, hey Tom, it's private, right? You can't access this outside of uh, of the class, right? So if, if you're a coder and you're looking at this code without knowing anything, even if I didn't put my comments, and you saw an underscore in front of a, a method or a variable, you know it's a private uh, a, a private member of the class. That's the first thing I want you to do. So it's a little underscore. Actually, it, it's very common if you look at um, code out there today. It's something that we need to keep internal. We're not going to share an underscore to the outside world. If I see an underscore when I do my, when I look at your, your uh, object that you create from your class, if I see the underscore, that means you've done something wrong, right? It's supposed to be, the underscore should be only for internal. How are you doing? Welcome back. Um, so that's why I've done these. I've kind of given you the names. Diameter for the planet. That's one of the instance variables. It's going to be of type double, right? Type double. And um, you're going to have mass, uh, a moon count of type int, a name. These are all the instance variables. And then I want you to create getters and setters, right? Getters and setters or properties. Remember we talked about the difference between instance variables and properties. Instance variables hold your data. Properties... Right? Properties, what they do is they allow you to access your data and you can create a read-write property with getters and setters or you can create a, um, a read-only property with getters alone. Right? So if all you have is a getter, then it's a read-only property. Right? So there's a couple of read-only properties that I've asked you to kind of create here. And this is the face, I look at it like this, it's the face of your class, like as if I'm the representative, the delegate, if you will. I'm the delegate of your class. And you know what? And, the, and this, when I represent your class, I'm the property that represents the, the, the fields or uh, instance variables. Okay? 
So if you notice, there's almost the same number of them, right? I have all these fields. These are internal, right? And all these properties with getter and setter methods. Some of them have read only, some of them have read write. I would need you to be able to do that. And this, by the way, is an abstract class, which means you have to use the abstract keyword, right? Okay, uh, when it comes to methods, there's the constructor method, which is the same name, planet, as an example, right? And then I want you to override the built-in method to string. Let's take a look at that. So what does that mean um, when you have the built-in method to string? First of all, I'm going to launch, um, one day I'll get to the right one, Eclipse. <laughs> Let's launch Eclipse together. And I'm using Eclipse Luna here. Um, you can use whatever Eclipse version you have again. And uh, we're going to talk about that for a second. Because remember, we're, we inherit from the object super super class. This is what we were looking at last week. I'm going to create a new project here. So I don't know, Louis, are you going to follow along with the, with, the, with the examples too? With the clips? With the clips? Yeah, I'm still waiting for it. All right, all right. We're going to go to uh, File, New, Java Project, right? And it's going to ask me for the project name. And of course, I'm going to call it the name of our course today, which is Comp. 1011-lesson uh, 6 today, lesson 6, right? Last week I just added on to lesson 4 because we're working on UI in lesson 4 and 5, all right? Now it says the type, um, Java SE 1.8, thank you, sir. And um, it says, do I want to create separate folders for my, and sources for my class files? Right now I say yes, and I press finish. Right now, there's other options. I'm going to go back to that eventually. I'm going to close these two things down, right? And if you notice inside my source files right now, my source files, I don't have anything like last time. I'm just starting off like you've never seen Java and Eclipse before, right? Again, because it's been about a week. <laughs> you guys kind of forget. Right click. We're going to go new class, right? And once we go new class and Eclipse inside of here, we're going to kind of declare what the class is going to be called. And we can call this anything, program, project, something. Let's call it program for today, just to make it. And we're also going to use, click on this area here, this option that says public, static, void, main, string, args. We're going to use that. We don't have a super class yet, and um, we don't have any inherited abstract methods, but we're going to click, click finish. And if you notice, our super class is the java.lang.object super super class. Press, press finish, and there it is, our first um, our central program is created, right? Well, if you notice, right, I, I'm going to just take away this, this auto-generated uh, code here. If you notice, if I do something like this, if I start typing O for object, capital O, can I do this? Can I use object as a class? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you, say, you said no, right? Let's, let's say, so it's my object, right? My object, if I can type equals to new, right, object. Hold on here, hold on here. Uh, you said I couldn't do it. Here it is. How come I can do it? Right? Object is the super duper class that exists for all classes in Java and C Sharp and other languages. It's the same thing. It's, an, it's kind of a concept that uh, we have in different languages. So if I go my object now, my object, because that's what I called it, dot, and I press control space. These are the objects, these are the options that I have. Right? I can do a two string, right? That's what I can do. I want here's my two string. Here's my equals, here's my hash code, here's my notify, here's my weight. These are all things that are built into what? My object super duper class. And what I want you to do is here's my my question to you. Can we override this two string method? Can is that possible? Okay, if that's possible, this is what I want you to override when we talk to your, um, uh, to your projects. If I go back to your assignment number one, or assignment number three, if you notice two string is here, I want you to override the two string method. That's what I want you to do. We'll talk about how to do that today and why. Why would we do a two string method over? I'm going to show that to you and take a departure off of uh, UI just a little bit with our first piece. So I want to talk about that. Okay, cool. If you notice, there's a couple of subclasses for them from this abstract superclass, right? Remember abstract classes. Can you instantiate abstract classes? Can you? 
The answer is no. They're not made to instantiate. They're made as blueprints for your subclasses. That's what they're for, right? Um, and it also has a couple of interfaces. I've defined four, three interfaces, actually. And you remember what interfaces are? Ah, uh, uh, you guys don't remember? I can't do multiple inheritance. I can't inherit from multiple sources. I can only inherit from one superclass, yeah? yeah. But we can define the shape of my subclasses with the help of interfaces, right? So not only can I inherit from, um, uh, I can inherit from a, a, a superclass, but I can, I can implement, is what we call, we can implement different interfaces. And I can implement more than one interface, like I showed you last time, right? So there's the different things we've got to do. I want you to implement two interfaces for your giant planet, which is going to be a subclass of planet, and two interfaces for terrestrial planet, which is a subclass of planet. What's the difference between giant planet and planet, uh, and terrestrial planet? A giant planet is like a, there's two types. There's a gas giant, real, this is real, right? And an ice giant, right? So there's an icy type of, of giant planet and a gassy type planet. Gassy type planets are like uh, Jupiter, a gas giant, right? And there's terrestrial, is it Saturn? Jupiter is a, is a, is a, is a actual massive body. Failed sun. Saturn is yeah. the gas giant. Sorry, that's, uh, well, actually, is Jupiter also considered a gas giant? I think it is. Um, anyways, but the point is that if you look at them, now you made me curious. Darn you, <laughs> right? Let me see if I go to planets, right? Just from uh, Wikipedia, which are where I got some of this stuff in the first place. And if I go down to what it looks like here, hold on a second. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just going to skim through this. I'm, I'm skimming through this. So if you guys are seeing this on the video, Kelly, uh, just ignore me. Um, so here, yeah, look at gas giant. I got Jupiter and Saturn. I got a couple of ice giants, Uranus and Neptune, right? And then terrestrial planets with Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, right? So that's just uh, your astronomy lesson for today. Well, there you go. Okay, so a couple of, uh, and this is just a link from um, <clears throat> from up on uh, Wikipedia here, right? So maybe Wikipedia is wrong. Who knows? Okay, so we got a couple of things. We got a giant planet and a terrestrial planet. These are the two subclasses, and they're going to be, we're going to uh, uh, extend the abstract superclass planet and also implement uh, different interfaces. The giant planet is going to implement I has moons, right? And I has rings. The I in front of the interface is just our convention to say it's an interface. When I see I in front of the interface, right? You're always going to see this. When you see interfaces, uh, in most conventions, you're going to see an I in front of it. doesn't matter whether it's in C Sharp, in JavaScript, in Java, in whatever language it is, it's a standard convention, I, right? And then whatever the thing is called, has moons. This is the usually the main method you want uh, for the class to to force for uh, to force the class to inherit. Here's an example of that where I actually include because I have to implement has moons and has rings. I got to do that because I include I implement the I has moons and I has rings interfaces along with this giant planet subclass. And the same thing goes with um, with my terrestrial planet. I have I has moons and I habitable. Is it habitable? Right. And um, a couple of things that are different. The giant planet, there's a type private uh, instance variable. And of course, there's two types, giant or ice, right, that you can accept. I'll li leave that functionality up to you, how you accept either one or the other, right? Um, and also, an oxygen Boolean variable for terrestrial planets. So if it has oxygen, we're saying well, it's probably habitable, right? Uh, we're making an assumption there, by the way. We, not, we don't know that if there's any water or, you know, it not only oxygen, but there's also argon or some kind of crazy major um, other gas that's going to kill you, right? But we figure if you have oxygen, you can use some kind of filter to live, all right? That's the idea here with our terrestrial planets, right? Um, and of course, also, if you have oxygen, you have to be close enough to the sun so that you're not too far away, so you're not too cold, right? And if you're not too close to the sun, or else you'll burn, right? So one of those has to be the right place, right? But we're not going to include that. We're going to keep it simple, and that's why we kind of just have one thing, oxygen, and you're good, right? Assuming everything else is good. Um, it also has the I has moons um, interface because you know what? It doesn't have rings. No terrestrial planet has rings that we know of, right? But it does. They do have moons, 
right? So if that's true, if it has moons and um, and it, is it habitable, those are the two interfaces that I want you to implement. And of course, this the main method, terrestrial planet, which is the constructor method, is the one that you're going to use. Uh, and I've kind of indicated what parameters you're going to take. So the picture here, if you look at the actual diagram, gives you an indicator of how to create your class. Okay, any questions around this? So this kind of tells you I need all these things in my class. I need all these things in my class. I need all these things and these things. Just as an aside, this is my program. So my main class is going to be called program with a main function. And I'm going to have this, I call this wait for any key kind of method. And the reason for that is I want you to implement a method that you haven't done before where it waits for a key, right, for it to continue. So it's going to not let you out of your program unless you hit a key, okay? I want you to think about how to do that. Uh, let's take a look at the actual marks. Now, previously to this, the marks were much lower. They were like 20, 15. This one's 49, all right, uh, with a total of 59, including uh, everything else. So from a scale of 1 to 10, this would be a 6. This is how I marked them. See, 6, 59, 5.9. The other ones you've been doing up until now is like a scale of 2 out of 10 would be the last one. And the other one, the first one we did was a scale of 1.5 out of 10, right? It's really kind of chintzy and easy to do, right? So as we go, if you notice, I'm going to give harder and harder uh, lessons as we get closer to, um, obviously, there's more points here, right? So for the same amount of uh, points. So, for example, for 5%, you're working a lot harder now than you did for your first two assignments, right? And the reason for that is because you guys should know how to do this stuff. We've done it before a bunch of a couple times now, right? So this is, even though it's rated higher, it's just your first level of challenge. If you think about well, this is the real, kind of your first challenging uh, assignment for assignment three. You're going to have questions, and there's going to be issues, for sure, on this one, right? But if you follow the instructions, it's broken down pretty much the same as the other assignments. You have uh, the abstract class planet must include the following properties and methods. It's exactly what I've drawn out here. Exactly the same, right? With some details, it tells you also that the constructor method should take these uh, local variables and set the related instance variables to their values. So it tells you what to do inside the constructor method. And the same thing goes here. Override the inherited two-string method so that, the out, that it outputs name, diameter, and mass. Right? Think about that, how to do that. Let's do that today. We haven't really done that, and I want to show you what that means. Okay. Any questions around the assignment number three? So again, it's, it's called abstract planets because you're going to create an abstract class and two subclasses that it's going to inherit from this class, right? And in addition to the two subclasses, three interfaces, one, two, three, that you're going to use to implement alongside of the classes, okay? And it's going to tell you each class is going to tell you what to do. The abstract class must include the following properties and methods, and these are the things it does, okay? Any questions around this? I'm going to go over this. Um, if you notice, giant planet, it says, uh, here's an example of my instructions, that is a subclass of the planet abstract class. This class will also implement both the I has moons and I has rings interfaces. So both of those have to happen for you to get full marks. And of course, there's a few other things. The interfaces, I describe what they do. They're very simple, right? What they do, they just return uh, a Boolean uh, data type that basically tells you if they're, um, um, if it's true that it has moons or not, right? And what does it say? It says the interface I has moons, which will include a uh, method header has moons that returns a bool data type. And inside the the terrestrial planet, it says implement that has moons method that will return true if moon count property is greater than zero. Right. That's what, so. I, do I have moons? Yes. Good. Say it's true. So I can implement that has moons method. Uh, to check if, if the planet has moons or not. Okay. I'm going to stop recording this one here just because this one's assignment number three. It's just to uh, compartmentalize it a little bit.